From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Ray Kugel reporting. A confession to the Nemtsov killing in Russia. A Russian judge says a former Chechen police commander confessed to his involvement in the killing of opposition leader Boris Nemtsov, while authorities continue their investigation of four other suspects. All five appeared in a Moscow court and were detained as officials questioned them about the February 27 shooting death of Nemtsov, a staunch foe of Russian President Vladimir Putin. Nemtsov was shot four times in the back while walking across a bridge with his girlfriend near the Kremlin. Authorities say a sixth suspect blew himself up with a grenade as police tried to detain him in the Chechen capital, Grozny. President Obama says American and Iranian negotiators have narrowed their differences over Iran's suspect nuclear program, but says he is prepared to end negotiations if no acceptable deal can be worked out. Speaking in a pre-recorded interview aired Sunday on CBS Television's Face the Nation, Mr. Obama said any deal must permit Western inspectors to verify that Tehran is not working to develop a nuclear weapon. With a target date of late March for an agreement, Mr. Obama said if there is no deal, then we walk away. Later in the program, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he and Mr. Obama share the same goal of preventing Iran from developing a nuclear weapon, but disagree on how to do it. I do not trust inspections uh, with totalitarian regimes. Uh, it didn't work with North Korea. Uh, they violated it and played a good game of hide and cheat. It didn't work with Iran. They have cheated and bamboozled inspectors. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu. The armies of Chad and Niger have launched a joint offensive against the Nigeria-based Islamist group Boko Haram. Chadi and Nigerian forces began the offensive Sunday in northeastern Borno State. This is VOA News. Three people were killed and 12 others wounded in a rocket attack in a U.N. base camp in northern Mali. The U.N. says more than 30 rockets were fired on the compound in Kidal, killing one peacekeeper and wounding eight other soldiers. The shells also struck a nearby encampment for Arab nomads, leaving two dead and four wounded. It's not known who was responsible for the Sunday attack. A week into the ground campaign for Tikrit, Iraqi forces and allied Shiite militias continue to clash with Islamic State group militants on the city's outskirts in an attempt to regain territory. The coalition is battling for Al-Dur and Albu Ajil, where IS snipers are hampering efforts to clear the towns of the rebel extremists. China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi says his country has every right to carry out construction and develop land around disputed islands and reefs in the South China Sea. VOA's Bill Ide reports. According to analysis and satellite images, China is building up several reefs it controls that are hundreds of kilometers away from its coast. On one reef, China has brought in so much land that it has created a new island. It has built a helipad on one and an airfield on another. However, China's foreign minister Wang Yi says that the construction is necessary and not a sign its policy toward the region is changing. Speaking on the sidelines of parliamentary meetings in Beijing this week, Wang also said the construction does not target or affect anyone. China says almost all of the South China Sea is part of its territory. Bill Ide, VOA News. Beijing. Malaysia released an interim investigation report on the disappearance of Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 exactly one year after the Boeing 777 disappeared without a trace with 239 passengers and crew on board. The report shed no new light on the mystery. The only unusual finding, that the battery powering the plane's location beacon had expired a year before the disappearance. Malaysia's Prime Minister Najib Razak says the search would continue. Remembering a turning point in the U.S. Civil Rights Movement Sunday, thousands massed at a bridge in the southern U.S. town of Selma, Alabama, where a march a half-century ago turned into Bloody Sunday. Police beat and tear gas marchers at the foot of the bridge March 7, 1965, when they tried to march from Selma to Montgomery in support of voting rights for all races. U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder praised the 1965 activists for their bravery in the fight for voting rights. And an Egyptian court postponed the retrial of Al Jazeera television journalist Mohamed Fahmy and Bahir Mohamed until March 19th. They are free last month awaiting trial. The pair was arrested in December of 2013, charged with aiding a terrorist organization and airing falsified footage intended to damage national security. I'm Ray Kugel in Washington. That's the latest world news from BOA.